If you just go there to survive, you're not going to accomplish anything. If you go there with a mindset to be able to operate, the coal will not feel as cold as it should be. Normally, you're going to achieve great things. Hi, this is Captain Adam Morton with the Canadian Army Podcast, and today's podcast is going to be about Arctic operations. I'm with Captain Cal Pelletzi of 35 Canadian Brigade Group in Quebec City, and he's the operations officer for the Arctic Response Company Group, or the ARC-G. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, hello. How is it going? <laughs> it's great. How are you doing? Yeah, very good. So uh, let's roll right into it. First things first, tell us a little bit about uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. So myself, uh, yes, I joined uh, 32 years ago as a private in the reserve, and I uh, went from uh, private to uh, sergeant major until I commissioned five years ago to captain. And uh, part of my career, I've been deployed on a bunch of uh, domestic operations like uh, Lentus. Uh, Lotus uh, up uh, Operation Nanook for the ice storm also in 98. And I've done also deployment overseas with uh, Operation Athena and IMPAC uh, most recently and uh, work at schools uh, within uh, regular force units. So uh, vast career and bunch of uh, different opportunities. And so now you're working with the Arctic Response Company Group. What does that role look like? Uh, I've been uh, with, with uh, the uh, headquarters in Quebec City for the past uh, 10 years. So uh, my primary role and job there was to set up the RG uh, capacity when, uh, when it was uh, put in place uh, in 2009, following the uh, defense policy to have uh, specialized troops to operate in the Arctic. And I've do, uh, done that job as a... Uh, Master Warrant Officer, uh, like the uh, Super uh, Warrant Officer at Operations, and uh, most recently as the uh, Operation Officer for the Arctic Task. So, I mean, people are probably thinking, uh, you know, it's Canada. We deal with winter all the time. Uh, In some places, it's winter like eight months out of the year. What are the differences between doing normal Army stuff in the winter and Arctic operations? The, the main difference is the environment. So uh, we, we used to say that the south, when we are in uh, northern Canada, the south is like Quebec City, Edmonton, uh, uh, Toronto. So when we go up north in the Arctic, the, the main difference is, uh, uh, is uh, there's no trees. So uh, at some point you, uh, you reach the tree line. It's around the 55th parallel. And when you go higher than that, there is no more trees. So uh, it can be a cultural shock for the troops when the... Uh, they arrive uh, on the ground over there because uh, they're going to look for trees to tie their tents, but uh, there's none. So uh, they have to be prepared for that. So that's part of our job before deploying to, uh, to prepare the troops for that, that kind of environment. The other main difference is the type of cold. In the Arctic, the, it's very dry in winter time. So minus 30 up there and minus 30, like in Quebec City, where it's uh, very humid, c- can be a... Uh, there's a bit difference with the type of cold and the effect it has on you. So uh, up there, when it's minus 60, you can freeze pretty quick uh, within minutes and sometime within seconds. So that's the main difference. Even if it's minus 60 over there, it can feel uh, quite warm because it's so dry. But uh, yeah, if you don't pay attention, you're going to get frostbite pretty quick because that kind of cold is uh, sneaky. That's the two big difference. Uh, when you operate up there compared to uh, south of Canada. And what kind of impact does that cold have on equipment? Like you have people sometimes who go out and, you know, the cold is enough to just kill your cell phone battery. How does that affect uh, the the gear that you're using up north? The main effect is on uh, everything that is uh, rubber made or uh, plastic. So the, the cold has an immediate impact. Uh, if you, you try to, to twist something that is a plastic blade base in uh, southern Canada, and you do the same thing up north, you can find out that it's going to break quite easily. And same with uh, everything that is uh, rubber-based. Seals and stuff can uh, easily squeeze and lose their flexibility, so you have to pay attention to that. Uh, and you, you spoke about batteries. Batteries is the main thing. If you leave your uh, GPS, for example, outside of your parka, you can find out that a couple of minutes after or like 30 minutes after or within an hour, batteries that are supposed to be good for eight hours will be uh, just dead. 
That's why uh, you you will see most often the, the guys or uh, women put their equipment uh, that are based on battery as a power source inside of their jacket or uh, winter coats. Other thing we see often is with snowmobiles, when we bring them like for, from Valcartier up uh, all the way up to Resolute, uh, when they get on the ground over there, they've been uh, accumulating some humidity during summertime in, uh, in Quebec. And when uh, they get out of the plane uh, in the Arctic, uh, within minutes, all the uh, fuel system can freeze. If you, you've not done a good maintenance uh, job with the machine, you can drive and after a couple of kilometers, uh, everything will freeze and you're stuck there with your skidoo. So at that point, uh, the mechanics, they have to uh, remove everything, uh, uh, purge everything and uh, start again from scrap. So uh, it's a lot of jobs. So th that's all kind of small details that we need to take care of. And uh, the main thing is the troops, the soldiers, they need to take care of and pay attention to their equipment over there because there's no... Uh, there's no second chance. Once it's broken, it's broken, and the, the resupply line can be quite far away. So, and because the, the local communities, they are very short on the supply equipment for the kind of uh, operations we do. So speaking of, you know, preparing your gear to go up north, what kind of preparation do you do with the troops before they start uh, Arctic operations? At 2nd Division, we have a, a training package for the, the guys that are uh, tasked within the uh, RGs. We have a three to four weekend training that is called the uh, Tundra exercise cycle. So it's a three to four weekend that they do in Valcarci. Uh, during these weekends, they will uh, cover a bunch of specialized formations and training that is tailored for the mission they will accomplish during the uh, validation exercise that is called uh, Guerrier Nordique for the uh, second division. Depending on the scenario we'll play, during our validation exercise, we'll tailor the uh, weekend training for that. For sure, we'll cover some basic thing like uh, how to use the uh, specialized equipment like the Yukon stove that is a kind of a wood stove, but it's multi-fuel and it's specially uh, used by the troops to warm the tents in the Arctic. So, uh, so we're going to train the guys on how to use those stoves and uh, we're going to also uh, put in place some uh, special package for the, the troops to be trained on uh, communication equipment that are specialized for the Arctic. Like uh, the ticks, the radios, the green radios, we call them. Uh, they are not very uh, useful in the North for a bunch of different reasons. So we're going to have our uh, comms uh, specialists train the, the troops on uh, satellite radios and HF radios. That is uh, our two primary means of communication up North. Uh, apart from that, as usual, before we deploy up there, we're going to request all the troops to be qualified on basic winter warfare uh, course. And uh, since the snowmobiles are our main uh, mean of transportation on the ground, on the land over there, so uh, we, everyone will uh, be requested to complete their uh, snowmobile driver course. It's funny that you mentioned the Yukon stove because I think a lot of the newer soldiers haven't really touched that piece of equipment or even seen it. And some of the more senior folks will be like, yeah, oh yeah, that was a great piece of gear. And that is still to this day, one of the essential pieces of equipment for Arctic operations. Yeah, and it's funny you, you talk about that because uh, when we started to put in place the, the capacity, uh, we were uh, doing a bunch of uh, kit lists for us to get to, so we could become more specialized with uh, Arctic operations. So uh, the big one was the Yukon stove and the first car we did to uh, to the different depots and uh, quartermaster within the brigade was, hey, you have a Yukon stove within your uh, inventory? And they were saying, what what are you talking about? What are, <laughs> what's that stove? So we were explaining and uh, sometimes uh, you had some uh, quartermaster sergeant that was saying, oh, I, I've got a bunch of, uh, metal box at the uh, far corner of <laughs> yeah. my court uh, QM and it's uh, we don't know what they are so I, I was <laughs> we were telling them hey shoot us a picture and uh, yeah they, they were the you can still so you we have to gather all the equipment to a, a centralized point for us so we, we got uh, quite lucky but we put them to good use it's quite useful it's almost impossible to talk about arctic operations without hearing about the Canadian Rangers and their involvement. Like, I think every single time that I've heard about soldiers operating up in the Arctic, they come back and they have a Canadian Rangers story. What role do they play 
in Arctic operations? The rangers for us are, are crucial to our operations. So uh, every time we deploy up north within their uh, area of uh, responsibility, we're going to work with them. There's two big advantages to have them working with us. The first one is since they know their area, they're going to be useful for us to help the guys travel on the land, on the tundra. So they're going to be used as guide, as scout, and uh, they're also going to help the guys survive on the land. So they're going to be able to teach them, uh, for example, how to build it loose and uh, how to live on the tundra. So uh, it's very useful for us and uh, very important also for the troop safety. Because uh, when it's, it becomes cold, they can go and talk to the chain of command of the company and tell them, hey, there's a blizzard coming. So maybe we should set up camp and wait for the bad weather to pass. And uh, the other usefulness of the rangers uh, is the liaison with the local communities. So uh, most of the time we deploy up north, we don't have a uh, national defense uh, infrastructure over there. So uh, we're going to have to rent from the local communities infrastructure to set up the command post, uh, the supply stores, also the main medical bay if we have some kind of uh, medical emergency. So the rangers will help us do liaison with the local uh, town hall. So th that's uh, mainly the two uh, big impact they have when uh, they work with us. For sure, uh, by the end of every training we do, we're going to offer them to do a cultural day so uh, the troops can have a sense of what is the Inuit culture. So uh, the rangers will also liaise with the local community to set up something for us. So uh, that's uh, their main task when we deploy up there. A lot of soldiers coming back also come back with those stories of those cultural exchanges and kind of what that's like. What do, what do those look like? Like, how does, how does that feel? The first... Uh, Cultural experience they, they bring back about the Inuit culture that is uh, different than our culture, the, the culture from the Canadians from the southern part of Canada. Sometimes I, I used to say it's like you were going to Afghanistan dealing with the locals. It's uh, kind of the same up north in Canada. So uh, doing these uh, cultural events at the end of the exercise, it gives the uh, Inuits a chance to uh, to show our troops what their culture is. So uh, the troops will taste raw caribou, raw uh, seal meat, uh, raw uh, beluga meat, whale meat. So it's, uh, and fish also. So the guys have a, a taste of uh, of those kind of uh, of uh, meal. So uh, sometimes it can be uh, funny to see the guys uh, react, uh, taking a, a bite <laughs> of uh, beluga. It's, it can be quite funny. Also, uh, they're gonna show us uh, Inuit games, so uh, you have the Muskox uh, event and you have also the uh, eye kick and uh, they are pretty fun of tug of war. So we're going to set up teams to uh, go against uh, the Inuits. For sure, uh, Inuits uh, win most of the time because uh, they are pretty uh, strong. It's uh, pretty amazing. And uh, the guys uh, always enjoy also the throat singing. So uh, that's uh, impressive to see. So it's always a uh, good fun when uh, we can uh, have the Inuits show us their culture. So other than the Rangers and obviously uh, the local people there, what other organizations do you operate with when you're up in the Arctic? Oh, uh, that's the interesting part of the uh, deployment up north is every time we go up, we're going to deal with uh, other government agencies. They can be uh, Environment Canada, uh, Natural Resources, RCMP, uh, Coast Guard. Everything depends on uh, the mission we have to do or the scenarios that will be put in place for the exercise or the operations over there. We also deal with uh, foreign uh, allies. So uh, yeah, that's uh, an interesting part of the job up there. Why is having an Arctic operations capability important for the Army and the CAF? The most important thing uh, that is uh, behind the uh, setting up of the uh, our G capacity is for the uh, government to have uh, specialized troops to operate in the Arctic. For sure, the, our main role is for uh, Canadian sovereignty, but uh, we also call upon to uh, be able to react to any kind of uh, domestic emergencies over there. And also to support, uh, like I was saying prior, governmental agencies, or it can also go all the way to a scientific uh, mission or scientific project. Uh, and it's a uh, support scientific project is something we did uh, in the last couple of years with a project that was uh, 
aim at uh, analyzing uh, cold injuries to uh, extremities of the human body. So it's uh, quite interesting what we can do over there in the Arctic and uh, to provide uh, support to the Canadian government. So we talked a little bit about the key players up north, as well as how to get there, what type of equipment is used, and how do you prepare for it. So once you're up there, what type of scenarios do your major exercises cover? Since the, the Arctic is quite vast, the main uh, mean of transportation over there will be uh, ski -doos. So uh, most of the time, uh, our main objective with our uh, exercise up north is to have uh, uh, the troops practice mobility operations. So they're going to... They're going to have uh, objective uh, more than 100 kilometers from a home station, like the, the base station uh, where we deploy or the, the local uh, village. And we're going to create uh, training activities. They can be a search and recuperate uh, a crash satellite parts or doing a big uh, search and rescue mission for uh, lost uh, parties, all, all kind of stuff. Uh, we can go also to the uh, full spectrum of operation with uh, a bit of tactical mission, but uh, since our main goal is to be able to uh, travel over land in a very harsh and austere environment, we make sure that the guys, they, they know how to travel far away from the, uh, the, the village or the base station where we deploy. Because uh, if you cannot travel over land in the Arctic, you're not going to be able to achieve uh, a lot of things. So uh, a mentality we try to give our troops a mindset of be able to operate and not just survive. If you just go there to survive, you're not going to accomplish anything. If you go there with a mindset to be able to operate, uh, the coal will not feel as cold as it should be. And normally you're going to achieve great things. We were, uh, we were just talking as we were preparing for the show and uh, the producer was saying, uh, you know, you, you got to be crazy to want to go and be constantly working up north in these uh, like extreme negative temperatures. And yet there are people who, who seek that out and, and want to volunteer and go up there to do all this stuff. Why do you love working up north in, in the Arctic? First of all, the, the Arctic is a unique environment. And every time you go, you're going to have uh, different stories to bring back. Uh, you're going to face different challenges. So every time, even after uh, all my uh, my years operating in the Arctic, I, I, I'm always surprised by what I can be confronted with as a challenge when we go. And it's a big accomplishment. Every time we uh, are able to go there, do our things, our missions, and come back and realize everything within the uh, the environmental limitation and uh, all the factors that can uh, affect your exercise, it's always a great accomplishment. So that, that's the main reason. But yeah, people we see is, is crazy. But uh, yeah, me for myself, I love it. And uh, it's pretty cool because uh, there's not many people who want to take my job. So uh, <laughs> at some point, it's pretty great to keep my, my job also. Yeah, job security. You got to love it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, is there anything else you want to add before we wrap up? No, uh, maybe a last thing uh, for those who will be afraid to go there or uh, think it's, uh, they will not enjoy the experience. I recommend everyone within the forces to go. It's uh, an experience of a lifetime. I've been going up a lot, uh, been to most, uh, the, the uh, most important location up north uh, being Iqaluit, uh, Yellowknife, Alert, Eureka. I've been to all of those places and uh, just the environment, it's unique. So uh, don't be afraid to go. There's people with a lot of experience that will be there to help you out. And uh, most of the time, the troops, when they come back from that kind of, those kind of uh, operation, they enjoy it and they want to go back. So uh, the Arctic is uh, an experience of a lifetime. That's awesome. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's been a pleasure to uh, chat with you today. Yeah, it's been great. That was Captain Cal Pelzi of the Arctic Response Company Group. Before I sign off, I'm going to do something a little different and quickly talk about the Canada Army Run because it's a great experience that I've done before. And in fact, we've talked about it with a couple of guests. Super worth checking out. This year, it's sticking with the virtual format and registration is kicking off. So check it out on armyrun.ca and there's early bird pricing before March 31st. So save yourself a couple of dollars and help out the troops. I'm Captain Adam Morton with the Canadian Army Podcast. As usual, stay frosty. Stay frosty.